is good, YouTube Quinn Wade Basketball Analysis coming to you on a quick video. I wanted to let you guys know I got some new merchandise available, not just t-shirt anymore. I got different type of t-shirt, different type of shirts and logos that you can purchase on my spread shirt and also hoodies now. We have expanded and added more to the channel and more merchandise for the brand. Thanks for supporting. It will be in the description and the links will be in the comment section below. Thanks for helping me and supporting the movement. Quinn Way Basketball Analysis. I'm going to check out the video. Like this video. Check out my older videos on my channel. I have many playlists. I break down rookies. I break down players. I break down summer league. I do cover the draft and I got a mock draft up already. Not only that, I do podcasts and I also talk about the game of basketball, whether it comes to summer league, free agency, trade deadline, buyouts, and also I cover top 10 discussions and stuff like that. So you like this type of video, you like the NBA, check out my older videos and my playlists. I enjoy making these videos. You guys enjoy watching. I'm go what is good, YouTube? Quinn Way, Basketball Analysis. Coming to y'all with another video, we're going to talk about another rookie that did not make my top 10 rookies, and he hasn't even been close, and it's the project, the guy that we knew could be special, but we also had a lot of question marks on him, not just because of his motor and his ability to care about the game, but he was so raw. He showed flashes, but he struggled with consistency. He struggled with being dependable. And sometimes he can steal you a game and sometimes he don't show up. Sometimes he can get hot. Sometimes he just disappear in the offense and defensively. And we're going to talk about Cam Reddish, the guy that a lot of people feel can make that Luka Dantich, Trey Young trade a lot better for Atlanta. Trey Young so far has proven that he's an all-star caliber guy, especially in the Eastern Conference. And he has been able to score a whole lot of points. And he has become one of the better playmakers and passers in the league, which translated um, his shooting is still a little sh sketchy. But especially without having John Collins out there, you see in Trey Young having trouble getting space and getting quality shots as he don't have that other guy to take attention and, you know, balance out the offense for him. But other than that, Cam Riddish has been a huge disappointment. Um, for the Atlanta Hawks fans and like I said, it's not the worst thing ain't like he's a bust Which people might call him a bust after this video or they might call him a bust because he's shooting terrible From the field from three he can't buy a bucket and I didn't know it was gonna be this ugly I wasn't a big Cam Reddish person in the draft. I wasn't the biggest believer I didn't really doubt it because I knew the potential he had and just like we've seen with other players in the draft that got drafted real young they're going to need about four or five years. And it sounds crazy because that's a long time. But when you're playing with a team like Atlanta that's still trying to learn how to win, still trying to learn who they are offensively and defensively, still trying to find out what pieces fit and what pieces are going to be here long term, there's a lot of questions. And it's fair because they are a young team and they are trying to find a direction and identity through trades and drafting. And they drafted Hunter, they drafted Reddish, they drafted Trey Young, and they got John Collins. So they found quality players and they have become good guys. The only problem with the Atlanta Hawks is they still struggle defensively because they don't have an anchor or great perimeter defenders. And Cam Reddish was supposed to be one of those defenders that can guard multiple positions. Um, the point, the two, the three, and some fours. Um, and I'm not saying that he can't do it because he's still young and his career isn't over already, but that's his job was supposed to be one of those switchable guys that you can hide Trey Young or call over for a quick switch so that way they can't abuse and use Trey Young, who's always is a walking mismatch for everybody in the NBA because he, he's not that strong and he's not that tall. So anybody can really take advantage of him and he's not the best athlete. So guys can use their speed and quickness that are the same size as him to get to the basket or get to a floater. But Cam Reddish has been bad. Um, and the sad part, as you guys know, I keep it real. I don't really see what he's doing well. I think that's the hardest thing about being a Cam Reddish fan for people and for being a Atlanta Hawks fan I don't really see that much positives. I really don't see anything that indicates this guy can really be something special. His three-point shooting, 
is way off. He can't really get to the basket and finish unless it's a dunk, which he doesn't even do that. Um, he can't really create off the dribble really at all. He struggles um, defensively, like I said before, and he does have the height, but he's he's not strength wise ready to play the three at this point of his career. And when you look at Cam Reddish, you see a, a guy with a lot of holes in this game. So that's why when you say four or five years, it sounds crazy in the beginning of the video. But once you watch Atlanta Hawks games, and I don't watch all of them, I don't really see too many positive things. If one, that Cam Reddish is doing well, that can translate to the NBA. Right now, it just looks like he's a basketball player on the court. And what I mean by that is he's on the court because they're playing him. He doesn't really contribute into too much of anything and doesn't really have an impact on the game. Now, we've seen that last year in college with his ability to disappear and his ability to not be engaged and really play hard every game. But it's very noticeable now because more people watch the NBA than college and he's getting a lot of minutes. And I'm looking at Ken Regis like, what can he really do well? What should be the first thing that he improves on? What should be the number one thing that he works on? Because he has just been that bad that he's going to have to work on a hell of a lot of things just to get to the level that people want him to be on, which he's not there. But I wonder what Atlanta did when they traded down and they got Cam Reddish. What did they really see in Cam Reddish to make him worth that lottery pick? Because I'm not saying that they regret the pick, but they had to see something for them to commit and feel like he was the guy for this team. And that's why I brought up the Trey Young and Dante Stray because that pick was the one that they got to move down to get Trey Young. And then that pick turned out to be Cam Reddish. And Cam Reddish was that guy that had a lot of upside and a lot of potential that Trey Young, he playing at an all star level. And we got Cam Reddish out of that trade. Now you get bragging rights if it works out. Because Trey Young can score just as good as Dante when it comes to just a, a total points. Like, he's not that far from Dante in scoring. And Cam Reddish could have been that last piece to really make the Hawks a, a, a great potential team on a perimeter defensively and give them some three-point shooting, give them some shot creation, but also be a guy that can really take over a game and, and win them games. So that's the number one thing that we're going to remember about Cam Reddish was that he was the pick that allowed them to get Trey Young in. He was supposed to be that guy that could potentially turn into an all-star. So you might trade for a generational player in Luka Doncic, but you might get two all-stars on this Atlanta Hawks team, which is Cam Reddish and Trey Young. And then you still have pieces like Collins and Hunter that complement Trey Young defensively and offensively. And that flow was going to be crazy. But at this point right now, I'm looking at Cam Reddish and I don't really see anything to really, you know, get from his play. He has really been sh that bad. But I really want to know what you guys think about Cam Reddish. Do you think that this guy can make it on this Atlanta team for the next three years? He's going to be on a rookie contract. He's going to you have him in restricted free agency if y'all can't reach a deal. But I really want to see how he evolves and how his game grows um, in the future because they're going to continue to play him. They're going to continue to give him opportunity because they took him so high in the draft at number 10. When you look at his numbers, he's getting 24 minutes a game. He started 16 games this season. He's getting nine shots a game, which is pretty good considering the minutes he's getting. He's shooting 31% from the field. He's shooting 24% from three, and he's shooting 3.83s a game and not even coming close to making them. 75% from the free throw line, three rebounds, one assist, and eight points. And he did get one still a game, but we know that steals is not the greatest indicator of anything because you can get a steal by just gambling. You can get a steal by being in the right area at the right time. So we knew that he was a project. We knew that. He had a lot to learn, but I really want to know why Atlanta picked him so high, even though he was going to be a lottery pick anyway. Atlanta seen something, and he will turn 21 in September next year. 
He does have the length. He does have the size. He does have the athleticism. But that doesn't really mean he's going to develop the potential skills to be a special player. He might have the talent. He might have the body and all the athleticism. But he still has to develop the touch. He still has to develop the field, the IQ, the jumper, the, the finishing ability, the ball handling ability to be able to get to your spots and get to the realm that can open up opportunities for his teammates and himself. So he's to me, he's far behind. I wouldn't honestly play him in the NBA. I would literally just let him play in the G League. We've seen some uh, lottery picks go down from starting to getting the opportunity to we just got to G League this player. And I think Cam Reddish could possibly be one of those guys that go from being a top 10 pick to being in the G League, trying to improve and develop. And, you know, I could be crazy saying that, but I wouldn't be surprised next year or later this year if he was playing in the G League. Now, I understand why he's not because a couple of their guys are down. But, you know, Jabari Parker has outplayed him and DeAndre Hunter. And those are supposed to be the perimeter wings. That's supposed to be the two-way players on this team. And they both look, one looks real bad and the other one looks okay at best for a rookie. So I really want to see what Atlanta is going to do with Cam Reddish and how they're going to build their defense up in the future and really how they're going to build a team around Trey Young um, as he is a liabil defensive liability, but he also don't have the perimeter wings that can really cover for his mistakes because it don't really look like Hunter. He's not there yet physically, and he's not there offensively either to really compliment Trey consistently outside of three-point shooting. But Cam Reddish, I don't really have any positives. And to me, this was a huge gamble that can either be a high risk, high reward, or it could be a flat out failure and bust. And if he doesn't translate you can just chalk it up as the Mavericks winning that Trey Young trade because he has, Dantage has become an MVP candidate. He has shown that he can carry a team. He has shown that he can close and take over games. And he has shown that I'm in the Western Conference and my Dallas team, a team that a lot of people, including myself, didn't even have making the playoffs. But they legitimately is right now a top five team in the toughest conference. And Dantage is ahead of all of that as he's been their primary playmaker, scorer, and closer, um, which has really blew a lot of us open because if you're in the West, it's hard to make it to the playoffs. And they're looking like a legitimate playoff team just with Dantage playing at this 39 and 9 level. And Trey Young has been great, but Trey Young hasn't been better than Dantage. And Cam Reddish has looked Teddy Blay at best. So let me know what you guys think. Is he going to be a buzz? Do you think he's going to need a couple of years? Do you think Atlanta is going to give up on him? Or do you think he's just so bad that he might be a G League player for the next couple of years? And somebody like Bruno was one of those guys that had the athleticism in the body, but he never could really figure it all out. So let me know what you guys think about Cam Reddish in the comment section below and what you guys think the Atlanta Hawks and his future is going to be as he continues to find out his game and develop Maybe this was a, a guy that might not pan out just because he don't have the work ethic or the mentality that he need to continue to get better. But he had made it to the NBA. He has shown that he can be, be a player in the NBA, but I don't really know what to take away from him so far. And honestly, he doesn't really look like an NBA player at all at this point right now, which is not a good look for Atlanta taking them 10th so let me know what you guys think about cam reddish and the hawks in the comment section below